Welcome to the Andy Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Senzo, and joining me today is Silverquill. Welcome to our nightmare, dear viewer. Aha! Uh-huh. In said nightmare, you'll hear me laugh at Kung Pao and the Fist jokes. Whew! Ah, <laughs> uh, nightmarish, isn't it? Oh, only if you listen to the full string of me. Remember the first time I watched that? My friends were like, oh god, make it stop. <laughs> Wait, did you watch Kung Pao with your friends? Yeah, in college. Oh, in college. <laughs> uh, I remember watching it and having a lot of fun. But as an adult, I grow to appreciate it a lot. Oh boy. So anywho, uh, in today's episode, we're not talking about Kung Pao, even though if you want to. No. But seriously, next thing we should really do is review Weird Al's entry to movies, and that's UHF. That's a really fun one to do. Ah, uh, classic. I haven't seen that in ages. Oh yeah, oh, same here. He, ha- he-, he has a lot of good jokes, like Conan the Librarian. <laughs> or Gandhi too, with The Reckoning. <laughs> oh... Oh, Sensei with his wheel of fish. Oh, yes. Stupid! You're so stupid! (laughs) And we're off track. I know. But anywho, uh, getting back on track. In today's episode, we are going to review issue 4 of the My Little Pony comic Nightmare Nights. Or is it the My Little Pony comic Nightmare Nights? Well, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, we're going to cover that one. Mm Mm-hmm. In this issue, Princess Luna's team of former villains attempt to break free of Princess Eri's nightmare magic. Ooh, will they succeed? Will they fail? Who knows? So before we jump into the comic, first impressions are in order and silver. What do you think? Well, this one definitely puts the nightmare in Nightmare Nights. As a very big part of this is witnessing various uh, members of the team dealing with their worst fears and nightmares. And we learn the seek the origin of Eris and why she's doing what she's doing. It's also the beginning of the turning of the tide against Eris. So this is a very pivotal uh, point in the storyline. But I I honestly think Trixie steals the show. <laughs> Just from her brief. You you finally get that moment of satisfaction that has been hounding Trixie all her life. Mm-hmm. So it's highly enjoyable, varying degrees of attention given to, to characters, but we'll discuss that forthwith. True, 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 true. And as for me, this comic is all over the place with its story. I mean, it feels rushed. That's, that's what I feel. Like, you would have expected this to be a six-part comic issue, but no, nah, it's just five, and we're on four now. That means... The final issue is going to be the jam-packed action adventure, uh, what you would call this, uh, finale of the story and whatnot. And as per usual, when it comes to My Little Pony Media, we're going to have a rush ending. That is always true. And people who complain that the ending feels rushed, they they haven't gotten used to the series. Yeah. But anywho... Uh, those are my quick thoughts about it. If you have not watched the, well, if you have not read the comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the issue. And well, let's start off with our heroes. Kepper. Yay, me love Kepper. And he's a cute little kitten. And he's being chased by the Storm Kings. What, Yetis or something like that? Or no, they're not Yetis. Uh, they're... Snow beast, whatever. They're hedgehogs. Really? They're hedgehogs. You can't escape us because you're too slow. Wait, wait. Really? They're hedgehogs? I have no idea. Oh. I'm just throwing it in there. Besides, they want they want to say they were starring in movies before it was cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. That blue, po- that blue poser and his redesign can't keep up. <laughs> they got it right on the first try. <laughs> but nobody really cares about them. Except for the shy. Plus, you cares about that one. That one, yes, yes. Uh, emotional trauma yeah but anywho uh kepper is running for his cute little life and tempest is there working with the storm king and somehow uh mercy comes along and tries to save kepper heroes never die but i'm not dead give it time (laughs) 
So in the next page, we see Stygian uh, waking up from some kind of nightmare or something like that. I don't know. I mean, he's just waking up. And he sees that he's being shamed by his friends. Shame. Shame. Well, you know, technically he's always naked. So there's no walk of shame involved, at least. Yeah, true that, true that. But anywho, Ares comes along to our heroes and tells them that this is just a nightmare, a uh, figment of your imagination, and I can make this all go away if you tell me who is involved in your plan. Stygian says no, but Kepper is intrigued because she pulls, uh, she says this to Kepper. Um, how about it, you for ball? You want to go back to losing everything you love, or you want to help me out and live a life of luxury? And this intrigues Kepper. Tell me more about this life of luxury. <laughs> I just love that. And I'm gonna pause here. So, uh, how was the intro? Great. Well, I certainly enjoy it. I like seeing uh, Eris trying to present herself as this merciful figure. But then as soon as she hears no, she's just cold and bitter. And because it's a dream, you can't hit her. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think this shows a contrast between Capra and Stygian. Stygian is, still carries the weight of his conflict with his friends, of turning on the pillars and not getting to be, you know, not getting to be the hero he wanted to be. So he's making a very valiant, but ultimately foolhardy stand. Uh, you know, so caught up in his emotional state that he he doesn't see how he can turn this to advantage, his advantage. That's what Capper recognizes. And that's why he goes along with this whole life of luxury thing. I don't think it's... Uh, well, this is always hard to discern. For someone out there, this is one of the earliest stories they're reading. They haven't they haven't witnessed the double cross, or rather the double crossing hero before. So it might be innovative to them. Me, I'm an I'm a codger. I've been around for a while. I know that Capper's going to play her, so I'm I'm less tense than others would be. I guess it's sort of give and take. How far, how much this means, or how dramatic this is depends a lot on your experience with these stories. But either way, I feel Capper is being the smarter member of the team by going along with it. Mm -hmm. But of course, he was. this is precisely why Stygian brought him on board. And true that, true that. And you know what? Uh, in all honesty, your quick analysis of uh, Stygian and Capper is really fascinating because I would have never thought about uh, looking at Stygian's mindset like that. To me, Stygian is stuck in his ways. This is a nightmare and he's just, well, trying to do what's right for him. Uh, previously in, what, issue one, his nightmare is about fighting the Pony of Shadows and whatnot. So he's been going through that trauma while we all know that Kepper is a double crossing hero kind of deal deal. But I remember reading this and being shocked at first, like, oh no, you're being a traitor. But I just thought about it again, like, yeah, it's Kepper. He, he's obviously gonna double trick uh, double cross Ares at some point. So there's no surprise there. But still I do love that last scene where tell me more about this life of luxury. <laughs> it's so much fun. But anywho, moving on, we see Tempest, or oh, baby Tempest, getting her horn broken again and again and again by the Ursa Minor. And while this is going on, uh, Daybreaker says, I am the head of security, but I am stuck here babysitting this fool. I could have interrogated her and get more info about what's going on. Let me try to do some kind of magic. I do have a sun on my butt. Let's see how this works. So she does a spell and somehow it shocks her. And well, she I, I guess she passed out. You might call it a shocking development. Ha 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 ha. But anywho, uh, while this is going on, 
we see Princess Luna going up the stairs trying to find Princess Eri's throne room. But she comes upon Princess Eris and Kepper while Sijin's on the floor. And Kepper's just spilling the beans about who's involved with the plan and whatnot. Like, he is betraying our heroes. He is a jerk. Oh no, he is, he is bad. He is bad. And while they walk away, we see Princess Luna coming to Stygian and trying to help him wake up from his nightmare. Uh, Princess Luna says he she doesn't have her full power to wake him up. But when she was younger, she was able to go into dreams. So that's what she did. If she doesn't manage to wake Stygian up, they are both screwed. So should I stop here or continue on? Well, I think it's worth they a couple important notes. All right. When Luna says cap or no... I don't know if she's saying Capper don't betray us or Capper don't try to go it alone. Ah. It's never really clear if she realizes that he's playing Eris or not. Or if she feels that he's betraying them. I So it's up to interpretation. I, I guess you could say it's based on how you perceive Capper in the moment when he just mentions life of luxury. Because from that point on, if you feel that Kepper is a is going to double cross Ares, you could just say, "Oh no, Ares, uh, no Kepper, don't do don't don't go in alone. That's dumb." But if you went in knowing that Kepper is going to betray the team, oh Kepper, no, how could you betray us? It's a matter of perspective, I guess. Kepper, you dumb belt, <laughs> don't go run off on your own. Bad kitty, bad. <laughs> Let me get the squirt bottle. <laughs> uh, but anywho, you were saying. And then there is, they're, they're finally addressing the question we've been having this whole time. Luna, Luna lost her powers to Eris's and the staff of Seguinius, was it? Segundus? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Well, she lost her powers, but she's been sort of limping along on reserve power. So basically, she she's on uh, emergency mode then. Yes, she doesn't have her full power, but she has at least maybe some vestiges that give her... The ability to help out. Uh, all right, all right. So uh, with that, I'm gonna carry on. Tempest wakes up and tells, or just asks Daybreaker, "What's up with you?" She's on the floor and whatnot. And I'm just gonna summarize this because Daybreaker is on the floor because somehow the caller shocked her and whatnot. Daybreaker managed to cast a spell on Tempest wake her up but by doing so it shocked her and daybreaker somehow is kind of worried for tempest safety because she doesn't want her to get scorched by the flames and whatnot so that's interesting so they talk about the current situation and here is where we get into backstory uh so we want to take over for a bit with the backstory maybe you could summarize it much better than i could well, sure thing. So basically, we have a moment of uh, the a repeat of the pillars confronting the Pony of Shadows in what was supposed to be their final uh, fight before being banished to Limbo. The difference between these universes is that Eris was the Chaos Spirit, not Discord, and she decided to keep the conflict going by stealing the book that was meant to uh, seal the Pony of Shadows. As such, the, the pillars were in full retreat. They took Luna and Celestia and fled until eventually the Pony of Shadows whittled down the team and, well, killed everyone. He then tried to break Luna and Celestia to make them their dark counterparts, but uh, it, it didn't quite work out. But at the same time, too, uh, before uh, when he, the Pony of Shadows couldn't find the their world's version, he discovered mirrors to capture our worlds, Luna and Celestia, which was part of the, what was it again? Nightmare Nights? The, uh, I forgot what the issue was called. Uh, it was the annual comic that, cap that capped off uh, Legends of Magic. Yeah, and somehow that relates to this, which is pretty cool. Uh, this world's Pony of Shadows uh, failed, but yeah... Chaos. Well, 
but here's the problem. Eris assumed that as a chaos spirit, she was not a part of this, that she was a third party and it was hands off. The Pony of Shadows did not see it this way. So he captured her and essentially sealed her in a, what looks like a magic bottle and drained her powers. It was with her strength that he was able to find his worlds, Luna and Celestia again and break them into Nightmare Moon and Daybreaker. I still am a little unsure about how they know these characters, but I get the idea. Mm -hmm. It's engineering a fall through terrible abuse mm -hmm. rather than what whatever Luna suffered from her own internal breakdown. But the thing is, when you mentioned before about uh, Ares saying that, oh, uh, I'm chaos, I'm not a part of this, that's bullcrap because when she intervened with Star Swirl by grabbing the book, she was already involved. So she saying that she's not is just poppycock. Well, but it's poppycock she believes. I agree with you. The minute you interfere, you are a part of this pro of this flow of events. And but she likes to think the rules don't apply to her. She likes to think I'm above this all. It's also why she looks down on Discord, but here's the weird thing. Discord is strangely honest ab about his approach to chaos. He gets involved and he stays involved. He knows that he's doing things towards his own end. He doesn't pretend otherwise. Eris pretends that she is doing this for chaos for chaos's sake or that she's just nurturing the natural chaos. She doesn't want to admit that she interferes a lot and that she tries to take a lot of steps uh, to make sure the chaos doesn't come back to bite her. So she's willing to foster it, but not uh, actually commit to it. Yeah, and, and that's the biggest difference between her and Discord. At least Discord, when chaos happens, he just relishes in it. So it's a funny contrast, but looking over this and at the time, uh, oh, the, the spirit of malice, Cosmos, mm. in the in the main line. Discord really is, though he's no longer the, the sole chaos being in this franchise, he is still the one most honest and dedicated to chaos. And as we've seen, he can't he can't stop being chaotic because then he disappears. True that, true that. But at least I'm guessing after uh, dealing with Fleshai, he creates chaos in his own way. And in all honesty, Equestria is full of chaos. He just doesn't really need to do anything. Yeah, well, he, he can... Then he just sits back and watches. He knows when he's not needed to interfere. True that, true that. Uh, there's still more to the backstory, was it? Well, honestly, yes. There's eventually... Lo and behold, the pony you abused doesn't like that. <laughs> so Nightmare Moon actually turned on uh, the Pony of Shadows. But Daybreaker wouldn't help. She was too conflicted. And so, this gets really dark. The Nightmare Moon helps kill... Uh, sorry, Daybreaker helps kill Nightmare Moon. You can say that. It's a children's show. That's wrong, Silver. Nightmare Moon is banished into the Shadow Realm. Purple Realm. <laughs> Shadows aren't known to be purple. <laughs> yes. So that's where she is now. Mm -hmm. And in time, Eris broke free of her confinement and killed the Pony of Shadows. Now she is the one holding the leash on Daybreaker. Yep. And the way that she did it was ingenious because uh, the Pony of Shadow, fearing another rebellion by the quote unquote sisters, asked Eris to, device a um, to create a device to control Daybreaker. Uh, specific words were create a device that will allow me to control the yeah allow me to control Daybreaker and only access her only allow her to create spells that involve fire nothing more beyond that if she tries to do any other spells she will get punished for it and what Ares did was did so by creating a um, lock that only activates when the master allows so. But the way that Ares did it was the master was her, not uh, the Pony of Shadows, which was kind of smart. 
Well, and believe me, this cycle will continue. Mm -hmm. We're going to, it won't be apparent until next issue, but we'll get there. Mm, true that. So anywho, let's go to the best part of the comic. And that part is Trixie's battle with Twilight. Yay. So let's just say that they've been at it for a long time. The audience is in horror because they have been sitting here in for how many hours now just looking at magic tricks being done and the great and powerful Trixie creates the best illusion spell ever and that is the spinning pinwheel of the great and powerful Trixie and Twilight collapses in fatigueness or whatever it is and loses the battle and Trixie won Trixie is so proud of her win that she kind of tells Capper about her win and also the big giant bird lady and big giant bird lady just zaps her away oh it's like victory is fleeting but for a moment she was the greatest magician she outdid twilight sparkle doesn't matter if it's not her twilight sparkle it's a twilight sparkle yeah Im for maybe wider spread context imagine if vegeta got to beat up an alternate world's goku do you know how cathartic that would be for him but knowing Vegeta, he won't take that win because he knows that it's pointless because it's not his world's Goku. Oh, you never know. Look, he. This is a guy who through vicariously celebrated that his son beat Goku's son. <laughs> yeah, but it's that world's son. I mean, Vegeta is egotistical and knowing that he didn't win or didn't got a win with his world's Goku is aching him. Even though if he beats another world's Goku, he won't accept it. He is egotistical that way. And at the same time too, Goku too. Goku cannot... is not happy if he wins via help of others. Which is kind of interesting if you think about it. Well, either way. Wee Yay! But anywho, um, Trixie's up. Now, carry on. Trixie Zapt is just like, oh, victory is fleeting. Yep. Let, let her have her moment. But anywho, um, continuing on. While Ares is walking towards the prison cell, um, they break a panic because, oh no, what, what, you're, you're up. Um, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And Tempest says, don't worry, I have a plan. And said plan is Tempest hiding under the table fearing for her life because her teeth are falling out. Huh. That is interesting. Ares buys it and tells them that, okay, we got another one here. Um, do whatever you want. I'm gonna make sure... I'm gonna look for the princess and whatnot and also make sure that this stuff is safe before I sell it to the highest bidder of evil. Hey. Of course, let's also note that in this moment, she is doing exactly what the Pony Shadows did becoming lax in her guard and reliant on the very creature she's been holding hostage. Yep. And yeah, she, 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 she is, well, complacent. That's the word. And also, Kepper is there too. And Kepper is kind of replacing Daybreaker. If you take a look. See, I, I'm not 100% sure if it's true that way, but it feels that way. Like, he's walking around with her while Daybreaker is babysitting, and I think that irks her a lot. Well, she, or she sees an opportunity finally. Or she's, well, okay, there's a lot of things going on, because Tempest starts telling Daybreaker about Princess Celestia. Mm -hmm, true that, true that. Like, she starts telling Daybreaker about her, well, her, pro I wouldn't say proper, but I, I wasn't what I looking for, um, her history or who she really is and who what she could be. And it is a very interesting way to look at it. So while this is going on, we get to see the, the, the dialogue between Tempest and Daybreaker because Tempest has a plan to get the staff and complete the mission. While, uh, while, while she says this, she wants Daybreaker to tag along. Uh, Daybreaker just says, I still have my collar here, don't you remember, and whatnot. And they just talk about it and whatnot, and yeah. While this is going on, we get to see 
Stygian and Luna in their dreams trying to uh, get free from the what you call this nightmare that Stygian's having. And Princess Luna has this realization that she can't do anything here because it's not her dream or she can't control the dream anymore. Stygian is the one that has to break free of his nightmare. And the nightmare that he's having right now is the realization that he was the pony of shadow. Now he has to let that go and realize that he's not the same pony as before. And it works. He wakes up and we get a better scene of our team where we got Tempest and Trixie and also Daybreaker. And Daybreaker says, hello, sister, we need to talk. Aha! And to be continued, uh, much awesomeness. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, next issue will be the final and uh, cool one. Yay. So, Silver, uh, final thoughts. What do you think, man? Well, I really enjoyed this issue for how it's the turning of the tides. It is a start of something of Eris. We reached uh, the bottom. We, we hit uh, rock bottom last issue. Everyone was getting captured, defeated, distracted. The plan fell apart. Now a new plan is coming together, not just by the efforts of the Nightmare Knights, but by Daybreaker as well. And that mean that's interesting to watch. They say no plan survives the first encounter. Uh, so it's fun to see what they're improvising now. And this is where the strengths of each team member are slowly coming into uh, focus. Funny enough, the, the hired brawn, Tempest, is actually being very uh, smart in explaining things. She's winning Daybreaker over to her side by commiserating. Betrayed by her boss? How'd you know? Eh, same thing happened to me. Mm -hmm. Again, Stygian, I feel, gets forced to the sideline until Luna helps him get over his, his nightmare. But that's because his role was to bring all these characters together. Now that he's fulfilled that role, he's been more in the background than others. And of course, Trixie just continues the spectacle and provides something of a distraction, even when she's knocked unconscious. True. <laughs> the great and powerful Trixie has a concussion. <laughs> oh, boys. But it, it feels that the end, end here, like the, the setup to the final issue, it's going to be... Okay, let's just say that I, I've remembering from what i read is going to be fun but at the same time too it's going to be frustrating at the same time so yeah a lot of yay and err oh it's also going to be dark oh yeah true that true that so dark yeah maybe, maybe we want to go read it now <laughs> well not now because we're still in the middle of a podcast oh, yeah, true that. <laughs> anything more to add mm, nope just that it's very enjoyable and as for me i like this issue this issue sets up um how to put this previously when we mentioned uh that issue pre uh, uh, issue number three was the setup for the failure now this one is the setup for the end where we, we get a lot of backstory about how this world got to exist and in all honesty it is very interesting because who whoever read through the annual was wondering why did this exist i mean uh, how come celestia's daybreaker and whatnot i mean that, that's just preposterous and whatnot and a lot of stuff that was going on and with this one here it explains the timeline i'm not sure how it works but it is a lot of fun to see an alternate history going on aries here feels a bit how do I put this? She's a missed opportunity in her actions here. Like, it feels like she could have done more rather than just being complacent. But I'm guessing that's how uh, the start of her fall is going to happen. Yeah, she's succumbing to the same complacency that took the Pony of Shadows. But at the same time, too, uh, the Pony of Shadow was trick by Ares herself this one I'm not sure that if she's being tricked or rather that 
she is being complacent with Daybreaker because of the collar. She trusts the collar not to be broken, but it's just a normal lock. Like, Kepper could easily lock pick that away. Well, it, it looks like a normal lock. It may, in fact, be magical. Maybe you need a magic key. <laughs> but I, I do want to draw a parallel. Uh, Eris says that uh, the Pony Shadows had grown too dependent on her, that he he took her power for granted, and that's when she saw an opportunity to subvert him through Daybreaker. Now, she's grown very dependent on the lock she made to keep Daybreaker in check, and now I think Daybreaker sees this complacency, and thus it is a cycle. You rise to power, you, ha you hold dominion, but power makes you complacent, and then the next person looking to take it goes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as for now, um, I guess issue ends until we read number five, the final. But that is going to be a few weeks away. But I'm guessing with that, we can wrap it up. So, Silver, what are you going to do next week for this show? Well, for this show, as we are continuing to talk about the ponies, we have our next My Little Pony Friendship is Magic episode. Having uh, witnessed Starlight and Trixie in action, now we can return to what, watching the main cast and seeing how Twilight's coronation steadily approaches. But this is going to be an interesting one because we have a few other villains to uh, wrap up and reconcile. Uh. It's going to be Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash and Daring Do staring in Daring Don't Doubt. Don't doubt the don't. <laughs> Daring Doubt. Oh, yes. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know. You, you you complain about a rushed ending for uh, Most My Little Pony. We're about to talk about rushed reconciliations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that Fluttershy is OP in this one. She needs to get nerfed. <laughs> no, you do not nerf the Fluttershy. How could you, Norman? Nerfing the Fluttershy, I've never heard such such, uh, such propensity. I cannot believe you. Oh, man, I mean, she, she's too OP. You sicken me with your slander. Oh, man, it's not, it's not that bad, right? I mostly plan this up for laughs. <laughs> Will you? <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, she, she needs to be balanced out. I mean, I know Fluttershy is best pony, but come on. Don't you agree, Terra? I don't know. I just got here. I just came for the free food. <laughs> uh, how, are you, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. I just got back from my work. I had a nice nap, and then I woke up, and I was like, oh, nice. I can see if I can make it. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, we, we talk about the comics. Uh, we already gave our opinion. And you know what? I'm guessing you already read the comics and enjoy the comics, but uh, you know what? Give us your final thoughts uh, from beginning to end and stuff. I actually didn't read the comic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you sounded so enthusiastic about it. I did. I just didn't get the chance to look at it lately. <laughs> well, it, uh, it is available on the Comicsology. Uh, go check it out if you want to. It, it's there. It's there. All right. Tortera, Tortera's opinion is to be determined. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I'm guessing you will love it because there's certain scenes in it that are awesome. You get to see Daybreaker, you get to see Tempest, you get to see Trixie, and also Princess Luna. I mean, there's no spoilers there. <laughs> no, because we've seen the previous comics. Unless, you know, there was a plot twist and all of a sudden uh, Hippogriff comes out of nowhere and he throws his great blue, blue balls at Daybreaker. <laughs> that would be something. If I, hey, if I could cap, I caught a Daybreaker. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> uh, but you don't have enough levels to control her. <laughs> Yeah, he has to get all the gym badges. Yeah. Uh, but anywho, with that, I uh, will reach us out. And um, I already asked Silver what you're going to do next week. And that is, there you don't doubt. Yes. Don't doubt the dude. Mm -hmm. So anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, usually I go for silver first, but you know, since Terra just popped in, uh, Terra, where can the good people find you? 
Oh, the good people can find me on Facebook, even on Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they can just do a Google search and all the all platforms, including my Patreon page and my Kofi page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, you guys should go support. Terra is awesome. And also, Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on Patreon and Kofi under Silver Quill, which helps support my channel and my videos. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, just do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, and my devilishly handsome icon shall appear. And on Wednesdays, if there be a new comic or an editorial, that's where I'll be. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. Silver's content is awesome, too. I, I cannot give enough praise. Uh, the Pony Life one was really entertaining. Well, I hope my review of uh, Point of No Return will be fun as well. Uh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. And anyway, uh, also please subscribe to Radio on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stay to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MGS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Quill. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. I hope next week we get a full crew like normal. Like, this is just a big headache for me in the end. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I will make a longer appearance next time. Yay. I don't think Safi will. Apparently, she's caught up in the throes of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, you mean Ogres and Oblietz? Yeah, or Oblietz and Ogres. I've heard it both ways. Oh, really? No. <laughs> Who says that? that way? The comic. Really? O- is that Ogre and Oblietz? Is Oblietz and Ogres? Yes, the the show and the comic for some reason switch their their nouns. Ah, huh. okay, that's that sounds so wrong. Uh, Alright, anywho, uh, see you guys. Bye.